Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Sliced Lime and this is another advanced tutorial about command blocks. As usual, that means that we have just created a new world here. Nice spawn. And we're going to be doing everything from scratch. This tutorial is going to be about storing player information and values per player per game object in your game or map or contraption or whatever it is. So. It's kind of hard to explain sometimes, so let me explain while I do some housekeeping. So the point of this tutorial is to teach you how to store values per player per object. And that object can be anything that you create from like portals in systems or markers or doors or whatever it is, like pickups, items, quests, whatever it is that you have. You're making a system and you don't have a known quantity of them. So the generic case of this is you have something that you can plop out x amount of in the world. So let's say that you're making a new pet. You're making a new pet for players. And there could be any number of pets. And let's just say that we have a state of whether that pet is friendly to any other player. We have x players in the world, we have y pets in the world, and they all have a state to each other. And that's what we're going to be looking at. You Normally, if you want to store information, just create a scoreboard. Can't do that because we need X scoreboards. We need a scoreboard per pet. And we don't know how many pets we have. To illustrate that, let's just say that we want a system that we can create an armor stand in the world. So let's do that. Slash summon armor stand right here. And it's just going to, let's call it custom name uh, marker. So we create markers around the world, we place these out, and what we want to keep track of is whether I have been close to a marker or not, or any player has been close to a marker or not. Let's say that when I get here, I want to say, send a message that says, hey, you found me. And then when I get uh, back here again, it want to send a message saying, hey, you already been here, All right? Let's set up a fill clock here and we're going to do a sort of a backwards driven fill clock. So that means that we're going to be filling from the end of the clock. So when I start this, the fill clock is going to go this way, which is in the negative Z direction, like so. That means that once we trigger stuff here, if we trigger something off, a fill off of here, that will instantly run. All right, so first thing we're going to do is scoreboard objectives add ID dummy. The ID scoreboard, let's set it to display. Uh, sidebar ID. That is going to contain a unique ID per player and possibly also per marker. So scoreboard players add at a ID zero. That gives me a an ID and the ID scoreboard of zero. Now, we don't want to have an ID of zero. So what I'm going to do is scoreboard players set next player one. Whoops, next player ID one. So we have a dummy player called next player whose ID is one in the ID school board. So we're going to use that now to create ourselves new IDs as players join the server. And the reason we do this and add zero is that then we can detect that a player has zero and know that we haven't given that player an ID yet. So execute for any player who has an ID of zero or less. And what we're going to do is execute off of an armor stand, uh, which is going to be called new player ID. And we're going to do set block to redstone block. Yeah, now we don't have that uh, armor stand anywhere yet. So let's find a place to put that. And let's just put that in the next chunk over. So summon armor stand right here. And place it in the middle layer, that's fine. And it's going to have a custom name that is new player ID, and it's going to have marker set and no gravity. 
So we can just summon that in midair here and we get a redstone block. Now what we're going to do is, let's see which direction is which. This is the last block this can execute. We're going to do set block stone. Now this is a clocking block. It doesn't matter. It's not going to be a clocking block. It's only going to be executing things when we have a new player join the server or this world. So what we're going to do is we're going to take scoreboard players uh, operation. So this tutorial is going to be heavy in operations and they aren't all that terribly complicated actually. It's when you start to mix them together, they become complicated. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the player who has a zero score, which could potentially be more than one, but you're just going to grab one. It's okay if we only assign one new ID per tick. And we're going to set that person's ID to be the same score as the next player in the uh, ID scoreboard. So. We see that now this turned to stone and I got myself an ID of one. What we're going to do next is scoreboard players add next player ID one. So we increase the score of the next player in the scoreboard as well. So scoreboard players reset slice time ID. This will reset my ID and trigger the whole thing again as if I just joined the server. We see that now I got an ID of one. So my unique ad identifier on the server is one. Uh, but the next player's ID is going to be two and so on. Uh, so now we have unique IDs for players on the server, which is nice. Uh, now we have a way to identify ourselves as I am player one. Okay, so, but we also have these marker armor stands, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing again. Add ID, but instead of uh, at A, we're going to do it to at E, name equals marker. So now we see we got an armor stand, he has a score of zero. And of course we're going to do the same scoreboard, players set next marker ID one. So now we have a next marker two. And of course, we're just going to grab this, do the same thing over again. Uh, instead of at E, C equals one instead of at P. And then the new marker ID, you going to get a redstone block. And we don't really need this in its own unique chunk because these things are going to be triggering very rarely. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to summon this thing into this block and the OCD part of me wants it to be centered. So I'm just going to do that to get it all exactly centered. Now we can copy most of this. We'll copy, actually you'll start with this, copy setting this to stone. That's exactly the same. Copy the scoreboard operation and just instead of at P have at E C equals one and the next marker. And then of course we're going to increase the score of the next marker by one. And of course I named this and this armor stand wrong because I just did that. So it's called new player ID. What we're going to do then to fix that is going to do entity data at E name equals new player ID C equals one. So we take the closest one and we'll just rename it to new marker ID. And that should immediately give our marker a, a new ID. Great. So we, our marker is now called one. And let's say I were to go over here and summon a new marker. Some armor stand, Ooh, not an arrow, armor stand. And it's a custom name is going to be marker. We see that that one got the score of two and the next marker score is now three. So now we have a way of mapping markers to IDs. Now why is this important? It is important because we want to be able to look up information about me in relation to these marker stands. Now, what that means is we need somewhere to store that information. And let's say that what we want to do is count how many times I have visited this armor stand. So let's add a score for that scoreboard. 
objectives add visit count dummy. Okay, but I obviously don't want to store my value in that because then it will count up when I visit both of these and I want the information to be unique for each one. So here's where it gets complicated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to summon in a new armor stand, a marker armor stand that serves only to store information about the pairing of me and this armor stand. The way that armor stand is going to get its lookup is by two scoreboards. So let's add those scoreboard objectives, add player dummy and marker dummy. We're also going to need a few other things. We're going to need a scoreboard objectives, add waiting dummy and selected dummy. Now, one thing that is interesting about systems like these is that each command block setup that you do can only handle one query per tick. That means that if you want to check more than one player and armor stand combination per tick, then you have to copy all your command blocks. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our scoreboard objective set display sidebar waiting. So we have our waiting list in our sidebar. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill this scoreboard with the names of players who are close enough to armor stands to want to execute. So we're going to do execute at e name equals marker and then we're going to do scoreboard players. Actually what we're going to do is scoreboard players set at a uh, waiting zero. So I don't have a waiting score. And then we're going to do this thing. Execute at e name equals marker. So for each marker, we're going to do scoreboard players set at a r equals, let's say, four. Waiting one. So whenever I get close to any of these marker armor stands, I am going to get a score of waiting. That is one. And then when I move away, I get a score of zero again. So so our waiting scoreboard contains essentially all the players who want to execute a query like that. Then all we have to do is simply select one of them. Scoreboard players reset at a selected. So scoreboard objectives set display sidebar selected. What we're going to do now is we're just going to do a um, scoreboard players set at r um, score waiting min equals one. So a random player that is on the waiting list is going to get a selected score of one. And we already reset the score of everybody. So if I go up to this armor stand, of course I will be the selected one because I'm the only one in this world. But I will see at the end of this uh, video about getting somebody else into the map so we can see how that works out. Now, if we have a selected player, then we want to do a lookup. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to execute at uh, p score selected min equals one. So if we have a selected player, then we're going to execute off of an armor stand called lookup and do fill off of that. So we want to be able to not do any updates on this at all, unless we actually have somebody who wants a lookup. And, whoops, let's now go over here until the, the next chunk in this direction. Let us summon an armor stand in here. Stand here, that is called lookup that is set to marker and has no gravity. That's not exactly what I wanted to do. What I intended to do was this. Okay, so now if I go over here, we'll see that this fills up with redstone blocks. Amazing. Let us get rid of those redstone blocks too by doing fill. Um, uh, 
like so. So now we have an armor stand here that drives this fill. Whenever I get close to here, it's going to switch that on. And then when I'm not, it's going to switch off. Okay, so what happens now is we have a selected uh, player and we're going to execute off of that player. Score selected min equals one. And we're going to find the armor stand that is close to that player. So scoreboard players set at E name equals marker C equals one. And since we are selecting with C equals one that restricts our selection to one marker armor stand, which is going to always be the closest one. And what we're going to do is we're going to set its selected score to also be one. Now what that means is if we go close to this armor stand, we see that we get both me and that armor stands get gets a score. Now also notice that we have left that armor stand with a score. So let's reset that by doing scoreboard players reset at E name equals marker uh, score selected min equals one selected. Now if you go here, we're just going to see that this it actually disappears because at the end of every frame we remove that score again. But while we are executing command blocks around this line of blocks here, we have a score in the selected scoreboard for both the player and the armor stand. Now we can start doing operations. What we are looking to do is to find not this armor stand, but another armor stand called the info. And that armor stand is going to have exactly the same ID as I have in the ID scoreboard, but it's in, in its player scoreboard. And it's exactly the same ID as this armor stand has in its ID scoreboard in its marker scoreboard. So we're pretty much just finding one single armor stand called info that matches both the ID of the player and the armor stand. Now the problem is there is no comparison. So what you have to do is use operations and operations always damage the scoreboard. They change the scoreboard permanently. So layers operation. That's how it begins. And we're going to take all the armor stands named info in the world and we're going to take their player score and we're going to subtract the score of the selected player from that. Min equals one ID. So what this does is it takes the selected player score and it removes that from the score of all the info armor stands in the player scoreboard. What that means is that the score will be zero for all info armor stands that matches my player ID but that will be permanently so and we want them to have the ID back. So at the end of this clock, we're going to add my score back on. Now we have that, but we also want to match the armor stand, not just the player. So let's copy this whole thing again. Let's replace at P with at E name equals marker and replace the player by marker. And then of course, since we did that, we're going to have to undo it way back over here at the end of the clock. So plus over there. Now we have that, but if we go over here, we are not going to find anything because we don't have that armor stand. So now we're going to have to look up the information on that armor stand and see if it doesn't exist, we're going to have to create it. And the way we do that is we can't test for non-existence, we have to test for existence and invert it. That means we need another scoreboard, so scoreboard objectives add found dummy. And then do scoreboard players set at P score selected min equals one found zero. So we're setting the score of the player to zero in the found scoreboard. Now we're going to execute off of our armor stand that we found that is named info and that is going to be the longest selector you've ever seen. So execute at E name equals info. So far so good. So its score in the player scoreboard should be zero. So that means we have to do that twice for minimum and maximum. And then its score in the marker scoreboard should be zero and that twice too min equals zero. And if we have such an armor stand, then we're going to have it do scoreboard players set at P score selected 
min equals one found one, because that means that we have found the armor stand. So now we have a score in this found scoreboard that is one if there is an info armor stand and zero if there isn't an info armor stand, which means that we can do execute at p score selected min equals one score found equals zero. So this is only going to execute if we don't have an armor stand like that. And in that case, we're going to do execute at e name equals lookup. So right here, and then off to the side a bit, let's go four steps in the X direction. We are going to stash all our armor stands and that is going to be custom name info marker one, no gravity one. Okay, so now we have a bit of uh, logic here that creates our info armor stand for us. That armor stand is not going to have any score in the player or marker score right now. So what we're going to do is do scoreboard, whoops, scoreboard players add at e name equals info player zero. So that adds zero to everybody, which means we get a score and then the same thing for marker. Marker zero. Now, after that, we can match like this. And we can be sure that this armor stand is always found. So to just make that a bit simpler, we're going to do scoreboard players set at e name equals info uh, found zero. Whoops. Found zero. And then we're going to do scoreboard players set that whole thing found one and from now on that means that we can select that same armor stand with a query of name equals info score found main equals one so now what we actually wanted was a visited count and now we can get that so scoreboard players add at e name equals info score found min equals one visit count one so we've been there once and now let's check that out. So let's do execute at E name equals info score found min equals one and score visit count equals one. So if the visit count is one or less, then we're going to do tell raw at P score selected min equals one. And we're going to send a message saying you found me. Okay. And let's copy all of it. If the visit count is instead more than one. So visit count min equals two. Then we're going to say been here before. There. That's a fairly complex bit of logic. But if we go here, we'll see that it does indeed not work. <laughs> of course it doesn't. So why does it not? Let's go school board objectives at this place sidebar found. And it is zero for me. So this thing, this thing is working. Let's look up. Oh, that was a lot of fail. Of course, normally you would have an invisible tag on all of these marker armor stands and stuff. But since this is a tutorial, we're doing it without. So you've been here before, but the way it start here somewhere, you found me. So we'll see that the found scoreboard is one for me and one for the armor stand. So obviously we have a bit of a problem with the, <laughs> the thing ticking over and over and over. The way we can fix that is by introducing a cooldown that makes this thing not re-trigger until we've left and not been on, on the waiting list one tick. So let's do that. Scoreboard objectives add cooldown dummy. And what we're going to do over here is scoreboard players set 
np score selected min equals one and cool down one. That's all we need to do there. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to move all of this stuff a bit so that we can get access to this is the waiting one. Here we're setting we're setting the selected one. So this these two need to move. So we're going to take this, move it here. We're going to take that and move it there. That frees up this space. So here we now set the selected. And before that, we are going to do this. Scoreboard players set at a score cooldown min equals one waiting zero. So you're not on the waiting list anymore if you have a cooldown score. Then after all of this is run, then we're going to take you off the cooldown score if you're not on the waiting. Uh, if you're not. Uh, let's do this, actually. Let's set the waiting score to minus one if you're on the cooldown. Now, we're going to do uh, score waiting min equals one. Okay, now I'm done. Here, if you have a score in the cooldown scoreboard, and you also are waiting, then that means you're still in range of something and we're going to set your score to minus one. Otherwise your score is going to get to zero, which means that we can use that. So scoreboard players reset at a score waiting equals zero, score waiting min equals zero, score cooldown min equals one. So if you have a score in the cooldown scoreboard, but your waiting score is zero, then we'll remove your cooldown. So now it just says you've been here before once, and then I have to go back out and in again for it to say that. And here's my info armor stand. This little thing contains and stores information about me. So if I do kill at e name equals info, it should kill exactly one thing, or maybe two if I visited both the armor stands, I'm not sure. Let's do that. So one info kill. Let's say I go up to this thing. It call it says you found me, and then you go up again and it says you've been here before. So, but if I go up to this other armor stand, it says you found me on that one, and now I've been here before too. So this system is now storing information about my relationship between with this armor stand and this armor stand separately, and that could be used for you know pet ownership or the attitude of mobs or quest givers towards certain players or whatever it is that you're making a system for and that you want people to be able to use on a server or somewhere else without having to preset how many of the whatever it is this thing is that you make. In my case it was player plot portals. That system can now be used on servers, create any number of plot portals and we still track information about who owns each portal and who has access to each portal. So each single portal has a bunch of armor stands like this standing inside its own portal telling whether that player has access to that certain portal. And then players can give other players access to the portal and that creates an armor stand that marks that location. That is pretty much it. These scoreboard operations may seem like a pain in the ass and in a way they are but as long as you keep doing the reverse of what you did then you can use them for temporary checks of what equals what if you found this helpful if you need more help if you want more information about anything like this feel free to leave a comment down below if you did find it helpful then please do leave a like on the video and with that said thank you for watching and i will see you next time bye bye